So I just wanted to say that today's episode is sponsored by ASEA redox signaling molecules. Now it comes in two forms, the liquid and the gel, plus there's a huge other product range for us. Um, but why did I start taking ASEA and why is it now an integral part of something that my whole family, both four-legged and two-legged, take every single day? Plus also something that all the clients I work with, again, four-legged and two-legged, it's number one on my priority list. Well, part of what I do, what I'm passionate about, is understanding the challenges that are affecting each and every one of us in today's modern living. Um, the more you know, the more sometimes you wish you didn't know, but the pollution in the air, in the water, in the food, um, the control of our minds, the propaganda. But one of the things that we can do is take back responsibility for our own health. Now, every single cell of our body, whether we're an animal, whether we're one of the dogs in the backgrounds or one of my plants, contain these redox signaling molecules. And cellular health and cellular communication is absolutely key, whether you want to get your body back in balance, whether you want to reverse the aging process, whether you want to address any particular challenges that you've got physically, emotionally, it all starts with healthy cells. If your liver cells are healthy, your liver's healthy. If your brain cells are healthy, your brain's healthy. But just like a mobile phone, most of us have got mobile phones that we, we use on a routine basis now. But that mobile phone, regardless of whether you've got the latest model, is completely useless without a signal. So what does this technology do? Um, the the gel is something that you can apply topically over particular areas of concern, whether you want your skin to look better, whether you've got cellulite, whether you've got an area that's causing you a challenge. The liquid is something you drink each and every day to top up what should be in your cells anyway. But when our bodies are stressed, diseased, challenged, or as we age, we make less of them. So personally, I wouldn't be without it. My sleep's better. My energy levels are better. My mood's better. My mobility's better. If you want to find out more, the details are below. But I'm so grateful that this came into my life and I'm so grateful I can share it with others. I hope you love it as much as I do. Let me know. Right, we are here for our mint tea chat today. And um, we've got a fascinating subject today because one of the things that I think everyone who watches this, Bryce, is noticing is they're noticing how different everyone's reactions are. So even in the truth of community, the spiritual community, all these different communities that we segregate ourselves into with labels, which is something I want to cover anyway. But even within that, there's still a lot of oh my God, you're wrong. I didn't think this. I didn't think that. So today we're going to cover, we're going to use good old Trump, President Trump, as an example and say, how do some of our emotions that he provokes in different people tell us about where we're at ourselves and what our shadow side, what, you know, which shadows we need to address and why and how we can move forward with love and confidence for ourselves by using some of these things as a feedback tool as some of our best lessons. I think that's brilliant because that's literally, you know, anytime you're triggered by somebody else, it always has to do with you, you know? And so, and that's, and that's something that's really important for us to understand. Now, with that being said, I just want to clarify that if somebody is abusing you, yes, that's a different story. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about emotional, physical, uh, spiritual abuse. We're talking about just triggers. And he is someone that very much, he's very controversial. He very much, people either love him or they hate they hate him not many people have a middle ground with him and so this is an interesting one to to discuss and to break down and to look at yeah because what we want to do and this is again this is very much you know as we always say in these coffee chats we're on this journey with you and so we're going to talk through some of our emotions that it, it brings up and I did a video last week where I took a podcast where Candy Sowen had interviewed Andrew Tate and I took some clips from it. I've got some more and put it out there. And it's so interesting to see the responses because, again, Candice Owen and Andrew Tate, similar sort of things. They're very Marmite. You either really love them 
or really don't love them. And what's so interesting, it's like any good book club. We can all look at the same information, but we are living our life. We're viewing everything through our own individual lens. So we can all be looking at the same information, have completely different conclusions. And then everyone spends a lot of time and effort trying to convince other people to see things as they're seeing it. So let's yeah. take Trump. OK, one of the things that gets thrown around about him a lot is he's really sexist. And, you know, he makes crude comments or has done in the past about women. Now, one of the things I would say about that, what's always struck me, and obviously I've never met him personally. So I will put, I don't, you know, I'm going for what I've seen. Either, so be either, so. But one of the things that's always struck me as amazing is that all his exes seem to still be really good friends with him. Yeah, I, that's, that's, yeah, that's really telling over, um, yeah. And that's one thing about him that actually never bothered me. And I don't know if I'm just desensitized to it, but I never, I think you can always read energy even through a screen. And, and you know, we all grew up with boys. Boys make, I mean, we I talk about boys yes. with my girlfriends all the time, you know? So I, I guess it's just like judge, not least you be judged. I'm talking about, did you see that hot guy? Did you see, you know, all the time. So so how is that any different um, than what, what he's done? So that actually was something that never really, bothered me even before you know when he when he was first running I was very against him because I believed a lot of the media um it took a while for me to like start to like go oh this is actually interesting because he's not a politician let's see what happens and of course ended up with me going oh this is actually really cool you know but but anyway with that stuff with the with the sexist comments I never, I never really, that never really affected me. And yeah, you're right. He, he does have his ex-wife have not, nothing but good things to say about him. He's hired a bunch of women um, for high powerful positions within um, his business, within politics. He also was the first uh, president to hire an openly gay man uh, to be at a really high position within our national security. And so the comments he made did not match the actions. And so I see it as no different than something you or I would do on a telephone talking about some guy, right? Completely. And this is what I find so interesting. So I think with people, when we're looking at all these personalities, and that goes for what you're thinking about Bryce and I, when you're speaking, there's some people that love us and there's some people that hate us. And that's exactly the way the world is. That's why I've interviewed this week um, Don Jose Ruiz, or Don Jose, I would say it wrong because we say Jose in the UK, but it's Jose. But um, And he wrote the fifth agreement with his dad, Don Miguel Ruiz, who wrote the four agreements and not taking anything personally and realising we're all in our own movies, seeing it through our own lens. And when you start taking responsibility for that, of course, we're all going to be triggered. All the while we're in this human suit, we're going to be triggered. But your triggers will be different to my triggers, which will be different to my husband's triggers, which will be different to my son's triggers. And that's the point. And it's as you always say, you know, the sign of intelligence is can you entertain an idea without being attached to it and this is where my main growth is at the moment is like saying well that's interesting that's interesting to everything because actually why am I triggered why does something annoy me a lot one day that doesn't bother me the next that's my emotional state that's changed not the actual external situation absolutely and I think what happens too with a lot of triggers with people as well and I think that this is actually something you me and Trump probably have in common is that sometimes what's triggering is our delusional perception of reality yes. in the sense that we are living in a, in a fantasy land of pretend in our head. And then somebody comes along and drops a hard truth. And because you know, it's the truth, it creates that trigger because you don't want it to be the truth, right? It's kind of like that um, Mark Twain quote, it's easier to fool someone than convince them they've been fooled. And so I think what happens with people like Trump is they challenge the template in which we've been conditioned to live in. And so that causes a freak out for people because, because all of a sudden they, they have to start entertaining ideas that, that, that weren't something they wanted to entertain. You know, even looking at the other side of this, trying to watch my words, um, when we look at the big business of the elite, which you guys all know what that is. That's scary for a person who has put a lot of faith in their leaders to then accept that maybe these people aren't who they thought they were. 
And so that's why you see a lot of people on the other side triggered because all of a sudden it's their perception of reality that's been that's been um, knocked off kilter. You know, like, in, and we, I know I trigger people in the, the truth or community because I say some of these things you guys are focused on aren't actually real. Mm-hmm. And so these people have left that comfort of the matrix to go to another matrix. And so now they're being challenged there as well. And yeah, and it's, it's, you know, from the yoga perspective, any type of trigger that comes your way is showing you where you're off balance with divinity. Because if you were totally in line with divinity, anything that happened would be acceptable because your soul is comfortable and grounded and your soul knows who it is. And so it's just the body's way, the Shakti's way of showing you where refinement needs to happen, if that makes sense. Yeah, a hundred percent. So this is one of the main things that I really want to discuss today is the fact that whether we like it or not, it does all come back to us. So if we, if someone says to me, Catherine, you look like a purple elephant, I don't get offended with it because I don't think I do look like a purple elephant. So I find that funny. I don't find it insulting at all. But if someone says something that's a bit close to the mark, that I've actually got either a conscious belief or a hidden and subconscious belief that might be quite true, then I'm going to get triggered because I'm like, oh, they've seen something in me. They've seen something in me that actually there's a part of me that knows might be either true or related to something else that I haven't worked through. And this is where the lessons are just continually coming back. If if we're saying, you know, we don't think med beds are real, we think there's plenty of healing technologies now that people can use to cure themselves, if they so choose. And if that triggers you, then that's got nothing to do with our belief. Because if you strongly believe we're wrong, we wouldn't trigger you. Right. And the truth, if if something is true, it can stand up to criticism. Things that are not true cannot stand up to criticism. And so that's something that you you have to ask yourself too. So if you if you formally believe that there's some magical med bed that's going to be plopped in your house, it's going to re- take you back 20 years, change your eye color to whatever you want. If you firmly believe that, then that belief should be able to take some criticism. That belief should be able to be questioned. Yeah. But if you can't, if it can't be questioned in your mind, if you can't handle anybody saying that might not be true, then do you really believe that, or do you deep down do you know it's a fantasy? That's oh, what I would say. You're too. not made up because we don't all have to know the answers. We're not meant to have the answers. I strongly believe that you know that's the whole point. When we think we've got all the answers, will be the day we're exiting this physical body is my belief yeah. system again you don't have to believe that but the whole point is 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 it's so beautiful and i think this is why you know the whole point is allowing people to change as well so spiritual development and a spiritual journey is a journey so expecting someone to have the same beliefs and the same level of spiritual awareness say when they were 20 to what they're going to have at 40 and then at 60 is different you know young men young women as you say most people sort of say they're even more horrified when they hear the young women talk about men and objectify them so it goes both ways not everyone of course but a lot of people do I've done it I'm like oh he's hot um you know um and my my joke when I was younger I used to say well I'm not interested in talk when they say I was really thick I said well I wasn't interested in him for a conversation (laughs) And I'm joking because I'm always, I'm not like that, been married to my husband for years. But it's funny. But if someone heard that out of context, they'd get a very different impression of me. So this is what I find really interesting when you look at someone like Trump. What I think is all of us can look at the people that we've got really strong opinions at and say, why? What is it about it that makes it? So my daughter and I were having a conversation today. We've both got some people that we know in common that are very nice people, but which I would label as weak. And what I mean by weak is they don't stand up for their beliefs. So they'll sit there and watch something happen and then say afterwards, well, I didn't agree with that, but I don't like confrontation, so I didn't do anything about it. And I'm like, well, at what stage would you let the Jews get on the train to Auschwitz then? Exactly. You know. Exactly. Now, of course, there's different personalities and I'm not pretending I'm right, but I'm saying there's, if you it's not bad to have a strong reaction what's bad is the meaning that you put on that so to have a strong reaction even about Bill Gates and then to assume 
that everything you think about Bill Gates is 100% right, when actually look at any good movie, you know, how can we know what we do want when we, unless we are in a 3D duality? And therefore, we need good actors and bad actors. We need evil, we need good, we need God, we need Satan at the moment. Or do we? You know, perhaps that's an illusion as well. And perhaps duality is an illusion. So I'm saying to people is it's not the fact that you've got a strong reaction. It's the ability to question why you as an individual have that strong reaction. Because I know plenty of people that don't have any strong opinions about Bill Gates. Right. And that's okay, too, honestly. Like, and that's the funny thing is, is like, yeah, you have to. Um, this is such a great topic. Speaking of like Bill Gates, I don't know if you guys noticed from our video last week when we were going through the Cassopeians, there was parts I didn't read out loud because certain words. But if you went back and reread it, that fancy little party drug that we've learned about, we think all these people are doing it. And if you go read that, there are people they mention that we think do that that don't. Yeah. Don't do that. It's a very, and so that was interesting. Okay, so this is, and that's the thing too, like you, you, you learn a new piece of information. We learned about this little party drug and we start to, all of a sudden things start to click and make sense, but then we take that and we just throw it on everyone. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And so then we become no different than what we just ran from where we have to be able to have more complex thought. And when we are triggered, uh, Marnie Alton even said something about this in one of her classes. Can we learn, I'm paraphrasing what she said, and this comes actually from the yoga sutras. Can we learn as human beings, not to react to our reactions. Exactly. Like when you feel that trigger come up, instead of projecting that, can you sit and say, oh, wow, Catherine and Bryce just said that med band beds aren't real and that triggered me. Why does that trigger me? Because it has nothing to do with Catherine or me. I don't believe personally med beds are real. I don't believe they're real. There's a lots of reasons why I, at this point, I don't believe it. A lot of that has to do with common sense and, um, and logic and spirituality. That's not the point that we, you know, we need, we need obstacles in order to grow and create friction. And, um, and another reason too, is I've noticed a lot of people who are claiming these med beds are coming, want them for vanity purposes and not for health purposes. So this is just a plastic surgery bed. When there are literal children, if, if this was a real device, and literally there are children in the slums that need these ASAP for no fault of their own, where people in like America have just let themselves go, right? Yeah. And so that started that 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 narcissism that I was seeing come out really started to kind of like, ooh, that's maybe not something I want to really promote or think, you know, anyway, so you have to sit there and say, okay, so why did this just trigger me when I've seen no evidence of this being real anyway? Why am I triggered by them not believing something that I believe? Absolutely. You know, because if you really believe it, you wouldn't be triggered by it. Like if you really believe what you believe, it's like when people, when their religions get challenged, I deal with this all the time when I'm literally factually talking about how the Bible has been edited like mm-hmm. showing literal facts, like you can't dispute this. This is not an opinion. There are literal facts that show you where it was changed, at what date it was changed, why it was changed. It's recorded. Point being that there's a copyright on the Bible, right? Like, like they, I was that's- going to say, and most people understand that J.K. Rowling has a copyright on Harry Potter, and they understand she has a copyright on Harry Potter, just using her as an example, because most people have heard of Harry Potter and J.K. Rowling, because she created it. And therefore, if someone's got, if the Queen, if the Crown of England have got a copyright on a Bible, it's because they created it. Now, how much they created, we can all take it. This is one of the reasons why I absolutely love working with animals, because the thing is with humans, we can, um, depending what your personality trait is, depending what your emotional state, we can give people the benefit of the doubt. So you and I have learned some really tough lessons over the last few years by giving people the benefit of the doubt, which went against our intuition. And it will cont- and people will have done that with us as well. By the way, I'm not holding myself up as a saint. I'm saying people will feel the same about me, and that's absolutely fine. But the thing is about an, al- an, an animal. So let's take a dog, you know, man's best friend, the dog. The dog will react authentically to our energy. Yeah. Now, if our energy is scary, we might the dog might feel suppressed into going into a free state or it might feel aggressive to go into an aggressive state. But the one thing the dog will never lie, do is lie. It's not right. going to pretend it likes you when it doesn't. You'll notice it. It will either act scared of you or aggressive to you 
or you know it will pick up your weird authentic energy right here right now and it that will change as you can learn to control your energy field more so the beautiful thing is about animals they're honestly reacting to our energetic state right here right now um and they're not thinking about what we did in the past and what we might do in the future yeah and they don't hold grudges either they don't hold grudges so they do allow people to change and I've seen it loads of times so I've I'm lucky enough to have a lot of therapists that work with equine assisted therapy and there's loads of different types of that but in a nutshell animals giving real feedback to people and there's there's people that work with this that might have done what we would label as awful things in the past they might have abused animals they might have abused people because they were so torn up themselves they didn't have an outlet and so they repeated what they'd seen of an outlet and then they got to a stage where they wanted to do, do better and change it and the animals will work with them with that the animals aren't saying you abuse that person or that animal five years ago I'm never going near you again but what they will do is authentically pick up whether that person is really in a state of mind that they do want to receive feedback and work so this is a very long-winded way of saying, you know, let's go back to the Trump example again about, um, you know, has he actually, okay, has he actually done a lot of what he promised to do when he came into power? If that triggers people, my response back is said, where, where have you need, not been authentic with your words? Where have you promised someone you'll do something and let them down, or more importantly, let yourself down? And there's lessons in all of this for us. Absolutely. And it's also this type of, as you're saying that too, you know, it's that extreme um, viewpoint, black and white thinking a lot of people find themselves having. And one of my new favorite quotes that I, I love, you guys know I love my quotes, is two things get to be true. Yes. So when we look at like Trump, is he arrogant? Yeah. yeah. Did he do good for the United States of America? Yeah. Did he not fulfill all of his promises? Yeah, he didn't fulfill all of his promises, right? So it's it brings that 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 where things are not black and white, right? Yeah. Things can be can live in this this um this state of gray. When we look at um things that we've uncovered in this, you know, if you're someone that's in the truther community, you know, is there an elite business that has to do with carpooling and watching what I say? Yeah, there is absolutely. Does, does that mean that everyone in Hollywood does this? No, the, to the, you can have actors in Hollywood who are not involved, but also have people who are involved. You can't, as you say, Catherine, tar everyone with the same feather. You can't, you have to be able. And so when you're having an extreme view of someone else, where are you holding yourself to these extreme viewpoints? And if any, if all of us, if humans were so perfect, it's like someone said, okay, I've got a really funny example. So we've got a water leak outside our house. And the builders have been coming backwards and forwards. But every time they say, say, I'll be there Wednesday at three o'clock, they'll either turn up Friday at five o'clock or Tuesday at 10 o'clock. But the one thing you can guarantee is it will never be Wednesday at three o'clock. So we had to turn off the water, which affected some of our neighbours. And some of the neighbours got a little bit cross and sort of said, well, you should let me know. And I was like, well, if you've managed to find a way to work with builders where they come when they say they're going to come, let me know because I haven't mastered that yet. It's a bit like me going back to the med beds. I 100% believe the med beds are already there and I believe they're us. I don't believe yeah, the power. I, I agree with that 100%. But have I mastered it myself? Nowhere near. I can't hear my healing. Um, I had a really sad, you know, it's like people um, have said things about people that are public figures in our community at the moment that might have a sick member of the family. Well, if you really know what you're doing, why haven't you healed them? Because they're an individual and their free choice. One of my lovely old guinea pigs died this morning and I have got so many healing modalities in my tool pit that I use, but that doesn't mean I can heal every animal or heal any human because they're on their journey as well. And whereas I'd love to control that and let all my animals live forget together, that's my journey that I'm trying to inflict on them, not theirs. So, Absolutely. you know, the, and it's a big one for me because I take my responsibility to my animals really seriously. And I have to keep reminding myself that's not always healthy. You know, right. I, I have to let go of some of that control. So I'm very well aware that's something that I'm still very much working with. Um, and I think this is the thing when any of these public figures, 
we're all quick to judge and it doesn't mean you don't use your intuition as Bryce opened up with if you're thinking I'm not really comfortable getting in the car with this person do not get in the car with them that's not judgment that's listening to your intuition but equally is there one person watching this that hasn't done something in their past that they wouldn't want split all over the social media or all over the newspapers so if so if you're a different person now and you're behaving differently now can we allow other people to change as well yeah it's that it's you know it's so funny Catherine as you're saying that last week we spoke about the girl on the plane and I got so many comments oh but did you see her hand signals and I really wanted to vomit and I responded film yourself all day put a camera on yourself film yourself see how many times you throw down hand signals you didn't mean to throw down she was emotional can we not judge not Lee, oh, or as my mother would say, oh, but by the grace of God, go I, you yeah. know, like, like, you know, doing this, which is what they, that is a lot of people do this when they talk and they're not, they're not oh, signaling no back on that. Do this. I mean, all over the place. I mean, there's nothing more scary. Trust me, people, than watching yourself back on video because you do all sorts of things. You say things, you make expressions, you make hand signals. Plus also, I'm not a model and never would be, but I've seen, I've got a friend who's got, whose son is a really, really top level model and he's told to do all sorts of poses. Yeah. Oh, I'll, tell his tell you, I'll tell you the one thing that got me so, maybe so bad, I was going through old photos and I had been at Stonehenge this was probably 2015, summer 2015, I want to say. I was there for a yoga thing in London. And my friends and I were like, let's take a day. Let's just go to Stonehenge. Let's just go see it. And it was back when the selfie sticks were big. Yeah. I've got one now, but I had one then. But this was when I didn't, I don't think I realized at that point you could turn the camera to take a picture. This is back when selfies were kind of a new thing. Yeah. So I put the selfie stick up to take a picture of myself at Stonehenge, like a long distance. And I, it was such a bad picture that it had like cut half of my head off. So it was like half of my eye was showing with Stonehenge. And I remember getting in the bus back to the car park and showing everybody, my friends, and then everybody on the bus started cracking up laughing. I was like, I really suck at this. And because the picture was was perfect of Stonehenge, yeah. but for me it was like this. And I posted it like a, a few years ago on my community tab, laughing at myself because it like popped up in my memories or something like my attempt at a selfie back in. Yeah. And people like, look at you showing one eye. And yes. I'm like, this is the most, I wanted to smack those people. You, if you are judging me that harshly for a funny picture, an innocent funny picture, then I would really hate to see what's in your closet. Because that says more about you than it does about me. It's like what I sent you last week when it sort of said, when you finish criticizing me, um, can you please pray for me? Because I want to be as perfect as you are. And what I'm saying is, let's take this. Now, this is completely different from not realizing that there's evil in the world. I hope people realize we're not saying there aren't evil people. We're not saying there aren't awful things that go on in the world. No, no, no. We're not saying that you shouldn't be aware of those and try and change them. What we're saying is the fact that every emotion that we have to people, just in my own family, we can be looking at the same people on TV and we all have completely different opinions of them, completely. Because I'm like, you know, I've come out of this last few years of like everyone in Hollywood's bad and everything. But we all know that you can be in exactly the same situation and not see it. If it was that simple, no one would ever be in an abusive relationship. Right. No one right. ever be in a cult. I know people that have had been in really abusive marriages both way round, where either the man or the woman was abusive, and all their best friends had no idea, thought their partner was brilliant. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It absolutely. Time. It's it's that that judgment of and that's what gets me the most. If you can't if you can't show compassion, and again, it goes back to that two things get to be true. Yeah. Are there bad people in Hollywood? Yes. Are there people who are just silly and are accidentally throwing hand signs with no bad intention? Yes. Right? That's why I say we need actual evidence of, of crimes and not just assumptions because of what we're perceiving, like actual evidence, right? And and um, and yeah, it's it's uh, if you are judging people so harshly, then what about yourself are you trying to hide? what about yourself are you afraid of people finding out because there's nothing i'm an open book 
Like, I mean, I, I, I think I said this to you, Catherine, same thing happened with my dog. I, we, Robbie, we were sitting in the car and Robbie just looked so cute. So I put my camera up and started talking to him and filming him and he was turning his head. And then he looked at me during the filming and then he looked back and someone was like, oh, look, her dog is showing one eye. <laughs> oh my God. It's so hysterical. It is literally hysterical. I, and, and my thing is like, I feel so sorry for you. I feel so freaking sorry for you that you live in a mental sickness where you see everything as, as bad because the, 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 the truth is, and, and let's, and looking at this logically, if, if all these people that you think are bad were bad, then they would not be able to hide their crimes as easily as they have hidden their crimes in the past. Yeah. So it would have already been exposed. Yeah. So you, you know, judge, not least you be judged. And I think, again, it is, how is this, what is this, these triggers? If my dog looking at me while I'm filming, because I'm talking to him, therefore showing one eye triggered you, then again, that says more about you. And well, less about those were in a fear state, because, you know, you, you can only be in love or fear. Yeah. At the core of it. And the thing is, there's nothing wrong with realizing you're in a fear state. There is nothing wrong the whole point is there's something wrong with not recognizing you're in a field state and projecting it out. So if you're looking in the mirror and there's something really weird going on, your reflection is not going to move until you do. Right. This is what I'm, we mean about it all comes within. You can't expect anyone outside of you to change until you do. Now, we have all been programmed since birth to live in a fear state. And that is an issue. But anyone watching this knows that. So once you know it, it's like being an alcoholic. Once you've admitted your pro you've got a problem, then you make the choice as to whether you're going to change. So I am constantly, because I'm not pretending I don't sit, slip into a fear state, because I do. You know, when something's out of my control, like my guinea pig being really ill this morning, it's horrible. And I can see myself being into it. And then I have to think, right, okay, rationally, what's best for Dylan in this place? What's best for this? So when when we do find ourselves slipping into that judgment or the fear, once we recognize it, then we can take a step back and say, right, what do I want out of this situation? What's the message here for me? What's going to be the best course of action? And sometimes it is going to be really standing up and shouting and screaming and warning people about it. Yeah. But other times it's not, because if you suddenly notice that there's other people whose opinion you respect, not some nutter who's walking around in a mask. Um, but, you know, if there's someone whose opinion you respect and you're thinking, oh, they're not reacting the same way as me. Perhaps I need to look at this in a different way. Then we can all learn and then we're going to go up and we're going to change ourselves and therefore the world a lot quicker. That's my opinion anyway. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Everything is always a reflection of you. And so if you, the minute you start to learn that you start to heal yourself. And if you're not, if you don't like the reflection, then you're the one that changes that you're the one that has the power to change. And, you know, it's the, it's the same, you know, we, we would get all mad at our friends and family because they were letting CNN or the BBC or Fox news tell them what to think. Well, aren't we just as guilty as letting YouTubers tell us what to think? Rumble, tell us what to think. Telegram, tell us what to think. And the minute you realize that, the minute I realize that, I know for me, I stop judging other people so harshly because yeah. I realized the things that pissed me off the most about the quote unquote normies were actually aspects of myself that I was uncomfortable with. I was uncomfortable with the fact that people were telling me what to think because of divination or because of my soul was uncomfortable with that. But I would say, oh, look at, look at these people, my friends, they believe everything CNN tells them, but here I am. That was my spirit's way of showing me, but no, you're believing everything somebody tells you too. You need to do your own research. Yes. And so look at it that way. It's your soul's way of saying something's imbalanced in you. This person is just reflecting back something within you, whether it's a fear state that you need to work on or whether you've gotten into extreme paranoia, you mm -hmm. know, or whether you're triggered by us not saying med bed, saying med beds aren't real because you're terrified that maybe you have let yourself go and maybe the reality is, is that they aren't real. And that terrifies you until you project that out. But if that terrifies you, then that's a great place to start because now you can start to course correct. You can get up and go take a walk. You can start to eat healthier. You can start to really use your body as, I believe the body is actually the med bed too. I believe that's what it is. It's your body that is, it can do, it can, it can, listen, I mean, 
it, it doesn't take long when you you start feeding your body right and start doing good your body starts to to thank you pretty quickly and you the know? earth as well i mean you know that you've only got to look at anyone who's into regenerative agriculture to see when you stop putting the damage into it the power of the body of the earth of plants of nature to regenerate and recover is so incredible to see and then also being gentle to yourself as well so every single person watching this will go through stages in life when they're most vulnerable so 2020 when I first started my YouTube channel was an incredibly difficult time my dad had been terminally ill with cancer We'd all been nursing him for quite a long while. It was in the middle of the pandemic. It was a very stressful time. So was I likely to make good decisions at that time? No, because I was in a very vulnerable state and was looking for something to, you know, probably mask that pain. So I'm not going to beat myself up for decisions I made back then, just like I'm not going to look back and see what I did at 16 and think then, because I was thinking, well, at 16, if you can't be a little bit silly at 16, when can you? But if I did it now at my age, then I would be a little bit like, come on, yeah. now, get yourself sorted. So I think it's none of this is about beating yourself up at all. It's like you and I, we've laughed at so many things now because we can take ownership for it and responsibility for it. Yeah. For and sure. therefore, you don't need to take it too seriously. Just like, oh, that wasn't a good decision. What am I going to learn for it? What am I going to do differently? And I think if we all start really taking that feedback, then we won't have the expectations on anyone to be perfect. Because I tell you what, it does any human, it doesn't matter what position they're in, they're going to fuck up. Oh, absolutely. That's the point of being human. Shouldn't have swollen there, should I? That will probably get taken. <laughs> Never mind. No, that's okay. I see the F bomb all the time on my channel. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like gets past the nine minute mark. Yes, exactly. The nine minute mark. So, um, and I actually, I will say, you guys, because Claire Headley's episode is dropping today, I learned a lot about algorithms watching uh, Aaron Smith Levin. He's figured it out of like when the minute mark is where you, so I've watched him. So thank you, Aaron Smith Levin, because you've actually, and um, and I was, because Claire Headley works with him a lot on, on shows, but yeah, it's uh, it's some some of the, you, you never know, like you never know what words YouTube are going to no, do. No, you just don't know. It's a constant learning curve, I'll tell you. <laughs> so I can't wait for that in, a, a episode with Claire, because these people that have actually been there, done that, got the t-shirt, we've got so much to learn from them. And big praise to the people that come and use their bad experiences and we're seeing it in all walks of life it's nothing more admirable to me than someone that can come and authentically share their experience for the good of others it's fantastic oh yeah I told Claire that I'm so excited I know you're going to be speaking with her like their stories I mean I look at what they've been through and I've got nothing to complain about like they yeah. have literally been rock bottom and they they don't play victim they don't sit around and cry about not having a med bed or nasara nope they pick themselves up and they make something of themselves and they're now i mean it's it's their stories are unbelievable and so i highly suggest you guys um checking out all of their channels the blown for good channel um growing up in scientology uh amy scoby like there's just so many of them and it's just so their their resilience and their positive attitude is something that i can learn from i know a lot of people can learn from because that's the power of being human you know and so um yeah absolutely but we have winners i almost forgot oh, winners. so last week on bryce's channel we decided to give two giveaways now i was giving away because i spoke to this week and it would be dropping next week Don Jose Ruiz, a shamanic power animal. So I was going to send two copies of this book to two lucky winners. What are you sending to two lucky winners? I'm sending meditations to the mat. I don't have my, co I got my copy a long time ago, but it, it's in my, uh, on my Amazon link. It's a 365 day daily. So for a year, daily meditation journal from, um, based off of yoga principles. And it's a great uh, meditations to the mat. It's written by Rolf Gates. And so, um, do you want me to announce my yeah, announce now? your two and then I'll announce my two. All right. So Doreen Hendricks, 4958, Doreen Hendricks, 4958, and Grand Marshall 5521, Grand Marshall 5521. Send me an email at esotericatlanta at gmail.com and uh put meditation in the subject line so I know it so I can because I get a lot of emails, I can see it to you. I need your shipping address and your phone number, and I will have the meditations the map sent to you 
Brilliant. And um, for the shamanic power animals, my two winners are Francine, I'm going to spell this, F-R-A-N-C-I-N-E-P-E-R-R-E-A-U-T-T-9373. And then the second one is Sharon Spain 7816. So what I need is you two people to email me Catherine Edwards Life 17 at gmail.com. I'll put both emails below in the comments box. So if you haven't had time to write that down. And again, I need your full postal address and a phone number so that I can order it and send it. And for anyone else that wants it, both Bryce and I've got our Amazon links now below. So just check them out on there. So any final words before we head off for this week? I just, after all this talk, I want you guys to realize how amazing your body is, your intuition is, and these little bolts of triggers aren't meant to leave you in a bad mood. They're meant to teach you how to grow and how to evolve within yourself. And so again, as I say all the time, you are the storm. You literally are the storm. And so take your power back. Um, stop giving your power away. Take it back. Do your own self-reflection and at that point, your life will change so much for the better. And so I, I believe in all of you. I think you all absolutely can do it. Love it. And my final words, be like that oak tree, grow towards the sun, grow towards the light, keep growing. You know, an acorn doesn't stay as an acorn all its life. It grows. And if it is an acorn and it stays like that, the pigs are very happy eating it. So there's a purpose for anything. So, you know, allow yourself to grow, allow yourself to go through the different stages. Don't beat yourself up about anything. If you can get to the stage where you can have a sense of humor about it, it makes life a lot easier. Thank you so much for anyone that's watching. Big congratulations to the four winners today. And we will be back on Bryce's channel next week. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. And if you feel inspired, please do share with your friends and family. My goal is to inspire as many people as I can to live their best lives, to stay curious and to raise their consciousness and that of the collective. So to do this, I need to reach as many people as possible and this needs your help. If you feel drawn, would you be willing to share your favourite episode with five different people this helps us spread the word and also helps me encourage some exciting new guests to take part in this podcast. If you feel drawn to do that, I will be very, very grateful. All the links and discount codes where applicable for all the products that I support are on my two websites, katherineedwards.life and katherineedwardsacademy.com. All of the products are personally tried and tested by me my family and my clients. And finally, please do press the follow or subscribe button, depending which platform you're listening on. And above all, stay curious and stay free.